Good morning, my name is Clyde Baker. We are today gathered to look at some properties of a very, very cold material called liquid nitrogen. I've been with the physics department for 40, 48 years because I've been retired for eight and taught for 40 before that. Uh, what we want to talk about today is the idea of very, very low temperatures. Now, most of you know that if we're talking about like freezing outside where you have frost on your cars this morning, we're talking about 32 degrees for the freezing point. This is a balloon that I blew up a little while ago. Uh, it's just got air in it. And what I want to do is I want to put it in some place where I can pour the nitrogen and not have it get all over the floor too badly. But as the nitrogen begins to cool the balloon, the air inside the balloon begins to contract. And as the air contracts, essentially it gets smaller and smaller. And so the balloon gets smaller and smaller until in fact it goes completely into a state where uh, the air is basically has no volume left anymore at all. Now, that orange balloon kind of reminds me, last week we had a big football game. And you people from Nelsonville, York, where the colors are orange and brown. Well, what happened was, you know, when, the, uh, when they came to Athens, they essentially were playing the Bulldogs, whose colors are green and yellow. I didn't tell you, but <laughs> nitrogen changes the color of things if you want it to. So in fact, as the balloons begin to heat up, they expand, the air expands again, and when it does, it fills the balloons back to the same size they were before. Uh, for instance, you may have heard of the uh, fast trains that they have in, in uh, Japan. Those trains run on a magnetic system where we have to have very cold temperatures for the magnets to work right. And they use liquid nitrogen in that case. The basic idea is that two magnets, if you put the opposite poles near each other, will repel each other. What they do is they take a uh, very large coil of wire and they submerge it in liquid nitrogen so the current will flow very, very easily through the coil and that means they can produce a very high magnetic field. That magnetic field will repel against the magnets that are set in the track so it actually lifts the train off of the track. This is a standard flower I picked up at Kroger's this morning. If in fact I submerge the flower in the liquid nitrogen, Again, the heat's going away. You can tell because the nitrogen is boiling. That means the heat is being used to uh, change the phase of the nitrogen from liquid into, into uh, vapor. And once the boiling stops, we know that the flower is cold. So if I take it out like this, it still looks pretty much like a flower until I hit it on something, <laughs> at which point it no longer looks like a flower anymore. <laughs> it becomes brittle just like other materials do when they're cooled way down. In the biological areas, there's all kinds of things that they do with flash freezing, where uh, they have a food that they want to freeze very, very quickly to keep the texture and the, and the quality of the food good, and so liquid nitrogen is used in these kind of cases. I think if you, if you look at the things that can be done and are being done in science, that uh, a student that is interested and will look at these things and try and understand them a little bit, even if they're not an expert in it, I think that makes a good student. My whole philosophy when I teach anything is present it in such a way that if people want to know something later, they're not afraid to go look it up. This is the attitude that people have to have because you can't know everything. If you go to a book on the internet and look it up, you can find out what does this. And I think it stimulates the mind and it makes you a better person.